Good morning and welcome to worship. It is good to be in the house of the Lord together. Uh, a few thank yous to start us off. First of all, thank you to everyone who came and decorated the church this week to make it look so beautiful for Advent and for Christmas. Thank you to everyone who came and worked for Breakfast with Santa or brought children to Breakfast with Santa. And um, in absentia, a, a thank you to Rabbi Janine and to everyone at the congregation, Beth El Nair Tamid, for the invitation to Clergy Association to come and to be part of their Hanukkah Sabbath service for hope and healing. Yesterday was a very busy day. Uh, looking ahead, next week is the cantata and also the deadline for bringing in the angel tree gifts, for which there are so many. The need is very great this year. The children are sharing beds and sleeping on the floor in sleeping bags. So if you have not already picked up an angel, um, get one from Marion either today or during the week. And then we're really not that far from longest night service and Christmas Eve. So keep us in mind, and it would be wonderful to celebrate together. Are there other announcements to make this morning? And Mac has one. Again, thank you for everybody who helped out uh, yesterday. We represent Moses and the uh, one. I want to say thank you to the team group for decorating our 12 foot tree down there. They did an outstanding job. Um, and also, um, it worked out. <coughs> I talked to five different families who all went up to the thrift shop, and uh, I know a bunch of them bought stuff. So, uh, and they came back, and I was like, well, please tell your friends, and they were all excited about how big it was. So hopefully that will help out with the stuff. And one last announcement is not tomorrow, but the following Monday, we cook for the homeless. So a week from tomorrow is also cooking for the homeless. If anyone is willing and able to come be a part of that, be in contact with Mac also. Karen, um, the youth group Christmas party is also next Sunday. Um, and the youth group Sunday. Christmas party is a week from today. Marion, yes. Angel tree again. I'm sorry, I'll only be bugging you for another week. I just put a ton more aces up there. We've got two more families that one is coming either this week or two days before Christmas. Um, like Karen said, they are filled to the gills with uh, children. We're up to 36, I believe, now. Um, the highest we've ever done is 21. And let's spend a moment centering ourselves in prayer as we come to God in worship.
Good morning. Please stand if you are able and join me in the call to worship. Friends and family of Christ, lay down your plans and come together for worship. We set our sight on lists, plans, and appointments to be mindfully present in worship. Bring your worries and fears to the table of peace. Rest in the comfort of Emmanuel, God with us. We will not be afraid, nor we will not worry, for the, for the Prince, Prince of Peace is here among us. Lift up your eyes and see the world as God sees it, full of promise and potential. We open our eyes and our hearts to a new perspective, finding peace in God's hands. Listen, people of promise, come together and praise God. Let us call his name Emmanuel, God with us. Come, let us worship God. Please join me in singing the opening hymn, which you'll find in the back of the bulletin. with us and when God is with us peace dwells among us so speak a word of peace to your neighbor to your family members or to a stranger may the peace of God be with you please turn and greet your neighbor in the peace of Christ <laughs>
then please join in singing verse two of Light One Canda to watch for Messiah. <laughs> to come forward to lead us in the Advent wreath. For those who may not know, we began a time of mutual support and prayer at the beginning of COVID uh, that started out as 10 times a week, but we are still doing it three times a week. And the support and the love that these ladies show for each other is absolutely a model of the way Christ calls us to be with each other. Into a hopeless world, Emmanuel will be born, God with us, hope for all, and hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us, Romans 5.5. 5. Today we light the candle of hope because in God's presence we find hope. <clears throat> In a violent world, Emmanuel will be born, God with us, Prince of Peace, and the Prince of Peace tells us, when we become peacemakers, we shall be called children of God, Matthew 5, 9. Today we light the candle of peace, because in God's presence we find peace. Emmanuel, God with us, God of peace and promise. Our hearts can be at peace because your spirit, the comforter, is with us always. When we were violent, you called us to lay down our weapons. When we were anxious, you were present in our deep breaths. When we were in conflict, you helped us see the humanity in our neighbor. When we were agitated, you healed us with rest. When we were confused, you helped us find clarity. When we were in the wrong, you comforted our pride. <clears throat> and when we were traumatized and frightened, you protected us from despair. Because you have felt it all before and you know all we experience, we have peace. Amen.
celebrate and we are in awe of God's choice to come and to be with us in that special unique way of the birth of Christ out of love for us in the midst of the darkness of the world and the sins of our own hearts and so remembering our deep need for us and God's amazing love let us lift our voices in the prayer of confession which you can find printed in the bulletin let us pray Emmanuel God with us God of peace and promise, you know we are never alone because you are always with us. You were with us when we were anxious and worried, unable to feel your peace. You were with us when we were causing chaos and disrupting the peace. You were with us when we forfeited our peace in exchange for other obsessions. You know our moments of weakness and struggle, and you know our moments of loss. We confess them with boldness because you never leave us or forsake us. Forgive us, God. Because God is faithful to forgive us and because God loves us unconditionally, we are at peace with our Creator. Be pardoned. Receive grace today and be free to love yourself, your neighbor, and our God. Thanks be to God. <laughs>
remembering the incredible glory and grace of God's generosity with us, we open our own hearts in generosity to assist in the ministry of this congregation and in helping the needy of the world. Come, let us receive our tithes and offerings. with our resources, returning an offering from the abundance of your provision, will us with peace. We entrust this faith community to use our collective gifts in partnering with your mission of peace on earth. Receive our offering because we trust your promises and we know we will reap love and justice. Amen. <clears throat> and then please remain standing for our second hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, which you may notice has seven verses in the bulletin. Uh, we would like not to sing all seven verses, so do the first two and then the last two.
continue in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the blessing of worship, for this chance to be together as a family of faith, all gathered as your children, remembering that you are Lord and we are not. In the middle of this busy season, still each one of our hearts and quiet our minds. Help us to listen to your word in a new and open way today that we, he, we would hear it afresh with what it would have us here today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our first lesson today is found in the book of Isaiah 40, verses 1 to 11. They can be found in the Old Testament on pages 627 and 628. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served your term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. <clears throat> and uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their consistency is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. <clears throat> Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength. O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings, lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cries of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother's sheep. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. And then from the very beginning of the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, the first eight verses. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This too is God's word to us. The Advent message, repent. Repentance, a baptism of repentance. John the Baptist calls to us from this ancient wilderness on the other side of the world using biblical language most of us don't run into in our daily lives when we are not at church. And there's a lot of things in the world that masquerade as repentance, but don't actually measure up or mesh quite right with the biblical use of the word, with John's use of the word. Repentance in the Bible is not any kind of apology where I'm sorry is followed by the word but. 
because the but completely erases the I'm sorry. In fact, not only does the but erase the I'm sorry, but it often sneaky-like turns the so-called apology into a follow-up attack. Because I'm sorry, but is usually followed with some sort of version of but you deserved it or you had it coming or I was completely justified and not in the wrong and would absolutely, absolutely do it just the same again. I'm sorry, but you made me so angry. I'm sorry, but I couldn't bite my tongue any longer. Something had to be said. I'm sorry, but you shouldn't have made me do it. Most of us have received and probably given these non-repentant apologies from time to time. At its extreme, I'm sorry, but can become a common move in domestic violence situations, but it's not at all the only time that we do it. For example, there's a new video that's been recently released of Aunt Becky, who is done serving her time for using fraud and bribery to get her daughter into an elite university. And I haven't seen the entire video statement, but in the soundbite that's being passed around, Aunt Becky said that she felt like she would not be a good mother if she didn't pay thousands of dollars to illegally build the system. It's not exactly an unqualified, I'm sorry, and not exactly an unqualified acknowledgement that some more deserving student didn't get in because of her actions. Not exactly an unqualified recognition that lying and cheating are just wrong in God's eyes, or that actual good parenting includes a balance of nurturing real accomplishments and accepting our children for who they actually are, whether they go to Yale or not. At its very smallest, I'm sorry, but, is this little needling way that we drive wedges into our relationships. It's not the biblical idea of repentance. Repentance also is not, I am so very, 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 very sorry that I got caught. (laughs) Although we human beings are often, in fact, really super sorry that we got caught at whatever it was that we shouldn't have been doing in that particular moment. People young and old can very much regret getting into trouble because no one wants either detention or legal troubles. When I was growing up, the neighbors on our cul-de-sac had a couple of much older than me, pretty unruly children. And they would throw wild parties when their parents weren't home that would spill over into all the neighbors' yards. And they would goad their big dogs into chasing my brother and me, or chase us themselves on their bikes, threatening to run us down. They shot out one of our car windows with a BB gun. They just were like that. After one incident or another, and there were many, their parents marched the two of them over to our house. And we all sat awkwardly in the living room so the parents could force the boys to apologize to each one of us. But a forced and mandatory apology is an empty and meaningless apology. It didn't make any one of us feel any better. It almost certainly made them resent us. It did not improve the relationship, and it didn't change their behavior. If anything, it made them want to get at us a little more. Because I'm sorry I got caught is not the biblical sense of repentance. And repentance also isn't shame. It's not wallowing in self-hatred or hopelessness or despair. It's not making a big show of feeling bad so that the very people who've been wrong feel obligated to make us feel better. That, too, is not the biblical idea of repentance but it's something we're tempted to do. Thank goodness that none of these common experiences mesh with the biblical concept of repentance with what John the Baptist preached in the wilderness because there is no good news in any of them. Thank goodness here too, as always, God's way is better and bigger and more beautiful than our way. After all, it may well be in our lives that some of us will long for real apologies for deep wrongs that have hurt us that will never, ever come. 
And it may be that some of us feel entitled to apologies when there are at least two sides to that story and the other person is leaning on the other side and waiting for an apology for us as well. It may well be that some of us owe apologies we will never make because we don't see ourselves clearly enough to own it and realize it. Amid all the emotional messiness of human families, the emotional messiness of relationships, the emotional messiness of being human beings, the biblical concept of repentance offers us a way out of shame, a way out of defensiveness and of broken relationships, and an invitation into a better life. The biblical idea of repentance does not kick us down while we are down or pile guilt onto us. In the Bible generally, and when John the Baptist preached to us specifically in each of the Gospels, the word repent looks forward into our futures more than it looks backward into our pasts. It is about what we do right now, much more than about what we did before. Because translated literally, repent just simply means to turn around. It means to choose a new path, to go in a new direction, to make a fresh start. But not just to choose any path or to turn around in any random, aimless sort of way like a lost hiker wandering in the wilderness. To repent means to turn around to face God. To turn around and to follow the only path that can really lead us safely home. And so all these years, all those years ago and here today both, we prepare for Jesus' coming by turning around. Whatever path has caused you pain, whatever direction might have bruised your spirit, whatever course has fostered bitterness in your heart, no matter how much you have invested in it in the past, no matter how far you have traveled in any given direction, you don't have to follow it anymore. We prepare for Jesus' coming by laying down that burden of the past and even that burden of the present by recognizing that in God, our yesterdays do not control our tomorrows as individuals, as families, as a community, and for all humanity. By letting the past go, by letting it be over so that we can make room in the end of our hearts and in the end of our days. And turning toward the God of love who could have rained thunderbolts at us from heaven to smite us, who could keep a list of all our mistakes and require us to answer for them one after another after another, who could require us to spend our lives futilely trying to earn our way into heaven, but doesn't, absolutely doesn't. We are invited instead to turn toward a God who instead chose to do this amazing, miraculous, unking-like thing of laying aside the glory of heaven to be born as one of us in all our vulnerability and humility so that we can see him and know him and understand him and follow him and as best we can choose to live like him so we can hear a word of hope find peace and joy and discover what it really means to love God, love our neighbors and love ourselves so that we can have a life that has life abundantly and no end, and the, no end. it goes on forever. Practically speaking, what might turning around to claim that look like in a regular human life where we go out from this place and back to work, and back to school, and back to our families. Former seminary president David Lose invites all of us, and all Christians everywhere, to take a moment to just daydream what it would be like to already be living in God's perfect, redeemed world, where everything has already been made right Imagine yourself living in God's perfect, redeemed world after Christ has come again. Imagine how you would spend your time in God's perfect, redeemed world. Who you might choose to spend your time with. The things you might say. 
daydreaming that you are already living in God's perfect redeemed world. Imagine what it would feel to live in a world where the lion and the lamb could lay down in safety because there is no hatred and no fear. And we all live together in unity and respect and generosity and love, trusting that God is taking care of us, taking care of those we love and taking care of everyone else. Daydreaming that you are already living in God's perfect, redeemed world. Imagine then what it would mean to be filled with and surrounded by the fruits of the Spirit all the time. Love and joy, peace and forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And then acknowledging that Christ has not come the second time but remembering that God has already begun the work of creating that perfect redeemed world in sending Jesus the first time. Trusting that perfect life is God's will for you already. Consider for a moment one single, likely small, but definitely concrete place in your life where changing direction and making a different choice would bring you closer to living the beautiful life that God intends for you now. Maybe one phone call to somebody in particular, or a different choice with how you spend a morning or an afternoon, or a different way of spending money, or a slight shift in priorities. Flush out the details for a moment about what that new direction would look like for you and the ripple effect it might have for the people around you. And once it's clear in your mind, prayerfully consider if that might just be the repentance that John the Baptist is calling you to today. Remembering that John came not to wreck your self-esteem and not to ruin your life, but to help us prepare for Jesus, to help us recognize Jesus, to help us come to know Jesus so that repentance itself is good news and a gift and a promise of hope. Amen. Please stand and join in affirming what we believe with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. A few concerns for this morning. Prayers certainly for Stacy and Ashley, for Bill and Marion and the extended family. Prayers for Annie, who is a month ahead of Stacy in the same uh, process of fighting cancer. Betty Ripple sends prayer requests for Casey's nephew, who's serving in Gaza now um, to meet the humanitarian needs. Prayers for peace on earth in places where peace seems impossible. And what else should we be remembering this morning? Bill. Karen, when I was younger, I had uh, several aunts and uncles. Now I'm down to one. Mm. And I got a phone call Thursday that uh, she was in Oakland Hospital on hospice. Um, with some heart complications. So please do prayers for my Aunt Betty and uh, her family. Um. Prayers for Bill's Aunt Betty, who has come home from the hospital on hospice. Um, he used to have many aunts and uncles, and now Betty is the last one. Joyce. Prayers for a family that I know that are having um, marital and um, big family problems. And I want to get into detail. Sure. Um, Peace in the world. And then Joyce also is praying for a family that she knows that's having significant marital and family issues. 
Amen. I'm so sorry. Yeah. And Tom, how are your parents? <laughs> So Tom's mother, Barbara, had her eye surgery. It was successful, and now she needs to be compliant on what she's supposed to do. Marianne. For those who couldn't hear, it was an update that Stacy got her port put in to prepare for her chemo, which will begin next month. And her tubes out, which is yeah. a, a wonderful thing. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you that in your relationship with us, everything that you say and all that you do is always done in mercy and kindness and in love. So that even when you call us to repentance, it is a call that is meant for our own good, for our own healing, for our own peace, and so that we can live life more abundantly. Lord, soften our hearts when instead of turning around, we are so quick to cling to what we have preferred to do and how we've preferred to think, to our own ways. Lord, soften our hearts so that we can turn in trust, that we can hand you our burdens and our struggles, that we can find in you the comfort and reassurance and strength that we need for the living of these days, and then also so that we can come and live with you forever. Lord, open us to the word of the prophet as he might be speaking to each of us this morning. And then prepare our hearts for the coming of Christ anew in this season, that he would become even more Lord over our own lives. Lord, we hand you the concerns that are on our hearts and on our minds today. Lord, there are so many people connected just with this family of faith that are struggling and hurting and sick. And then so many more just outside our doors. Lord, when we are in danger of being overwhelmed, lift us up and help us to see hope and find strength in you. And so, Lord, we hand you Annie and her cancer fight and her mother Rita and her entire family. And we lift up Stacy in the middle of this very frightening and challenging time and her girls and her husband and her entire extended family. We lift up Ashley as her struggle has not led to the results that we want so far, and, and we hand her to you, asking that you would have your way in her body and that she would know healing in you. And for Bill and for Marion, in the middle of their own health struggles and then so many concerns for their children, Lord, give them the strength that they cannot come up with on their own. And then in the midst of all of this in their immediate family also then to have Aunt Betty go on hospice, it is so very much. Lord, we pray that you would be powerfully present with her and with all who love her and that she would not be in pain and her days would be spent in peace and in meaningful relationship. We pray for Casey's nephew in Gaza asking that you would watch over and protect him so that he would come home safely, but also praying that his work there would be fruitful and meaningful, 
and that he would spread healing and wholeness in his work, and it would be worth having been there. Lord, we pray with Joyce for her friends who are going through such a difficult family time. We often have this idea that the holidays should be easy, and sometimes instead, they're just extra hard. So we pray for them with whatever it is that is burdening them and tearing them apart, and we pray for all others who are finding this to be a challenging season. With Lynn, we pray for her sister-in-law, Carol, in the loss of her husband, asking that you would be with her in the midst of her grief and pain, and then also you would carry her through into a brighter tomorrow. And we thank God for, Lord, we thank you for Barbara's successful eye surgery, asking then also that you would nudge Barbara into compliance so she would take care of herself and that her healing would go well. Lord, we pray for this community. We pray for this family of faith with all the struggles that we have had together. We pray for our nation and its leaders. And then, Lord, we pray for the entire world with so many difficulties that are beyond our ability to sort them out or even our will to do what it would take to bring healing and wholeness. So we lay it at the foot of your throne asking that you would bring the peace on earth that we so desperately need. Lord, help each one of us to prepare for your coming. We ask all these things in the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Then please stand as you are able and join in singing Angels from the Realms of Glory, which you can find in the back of the bulletin. Spirit.
Hallelujah and amen.